Hey everyone, happy Friday. We are live at five. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And oh my God, Charles Bush is here, you guys. We get a legend, Charles Bush is here. Yes. Doing a new show at 50 Feinstein slash 54 Below. Right. Uh, my kind of 60s. So we're going to oh, talk about that. Fantastic. But we also have a lot of news yes. to fill everyone in on. That, so that's right. I'm going to start because I'm really excited about this one. I th are you, you're the only one I know that's seen this. I saw so. this show, The Prom, in Atlanta, and I loved it. I totally love this show. It's Casey Nicola's next musical after Mean Girls, because Casey Nicola always has like two yeah. or three shows coming. Uh, they did it at the Alliance Theater in Atlanta. It is so funny, Ryan. I'm it telling you, you're not hysterical. ready. <laughs> so it's about these two girls want to go to the prom together in the South, and they can't, and it's just big drama. So all these Broadway stars whose Broadway show just closed because it was a bomb, mm -hmm. they're all at the opening night party, and they're all like, well, now what are we going to do? And they find out about this, and they're like, we're going to go help the lesbians. And they all <laughs> go to, and it's, it is so funny. Uh, directed and choreographed by Casey Nicola. It is written by Bob Martin of the Drowsy Chaperone right. fame and Chad Begulin and music by Matt Sklar and Chad Begulin. Of course, uh, they wrote a lot of, they wrote The Wedding Singer together. Right. Chad wrote Aladdin. Um, anyway, it is going to be amazing. I'm pretty Sounds sure it'll be similar cast to what I saw in Atlanta. Beth Lovell, Brooks yeah. Jasmanskis, Angie Schwer, uh, Chris Sieber, Martin Moran. It's so good. I'm so excited. But it's not coming for a year. So, so I don't want to get everyone too excited. <laughs> it's coming November 15th. It'll open 2018 at a theater to be announced. A Schubert but theater. I'm telling you. I can't wait. You're going to love it. It sounds so good. Um, also, the Avengers are real-life superheroes. Scarlett Johansson, Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., and Mark Ruffalo are all going to lead an Our Town benefit reading at Atlanta's Fox Theater this November 6th. All of the proceeds from the... It, first of all, it's directed by Kenny Leone, and all of the proceeds will go to help uh, re the relief effort from Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. Um, also, there will be surprise appearances, appearances by other celebrities and friends of these Avengers. Uh, Tick Tickets go on sale for this event October 23rd at 10 a.m. Um, such a great cause. Yeah. Sounds the, incredible. So the kind of backstory is that they're all in Atlanta they're in, filming right. the next Avengers movie. One of and the, Scarlett Johansson really got behind this and she really wanted to do this. And John Gore, the John Gore organization, right. which is our parent company, got involved and it's Said, how be can a we big... Help? And yeah. I love Our Town, too. Absolutely. Our to Town's amazing. Town. Pulitzer Prize and Tony Award winning. Incredible. Absolutely. Uh, the Rink. Yes. Another show. I, I had never heard of this, but it sounds You don't know great. the ring? I don't. No, but as I was researching. Okay, you're going to get the original <laughs> cast recording from me any <laughs> yeah, minute. It's Tony nominated it is fantastic. score. Yeah. It's a fantastic score by Kander and Ebb. Uh, and of course, uh, it was a, but it was a short-lived musical. And Jason Alexander was one of the like ensemble guys. Oh. Fun fact: 1984 musical. It's coming to London Southwark Playhouse. They're gonna they're gonna fix the rink. <laughs> People have been trying to fix the rink for many years. Uh, next May twenty fifth to June twenty third, they will do it. So it's all about Anna, an Italian housewife, originally played by Cheetah Rivera, she won who a runs. Tony. She runs a roller. She won a Tony. Yeah. She runs a roller skating rink. And then uh, her daughter sings Colored Lights. That's basically what it's about. <laughs> Charles Bush probably <laughs> Charles Bush probably knows more, remembers more than me. Uh, anyway, it is a really great score. So it's one of those shows that everybody really wants to make work, but involves roller skating too. Right. So it's And like, Liza Minnelli played Cheetah Rivera's daughter? Yes. That's crazy. It's, it's, um, it's like Starlight Express meets Chicago. Excellent. But not. Well, <laughs> anyway, except we'll less, see. less murder. I'm excited. That sound, I'm very excited. It sounded great. Uh, Douglas Carter Bean and Louis Flynn are workshopping a new musical adaptation of Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, which is a great movie if you haven't seen it. It's a cult classic. They will be, they will be developing a presentation of it at the American Academy for Dramatic Arts, which is where I went to school what? a very long time ago. So yes. if you were there now, you could have been in I it could have because been in the it. students are in the it. The students are the ones that are going to be which, starring which in it. Which drag queen would you be most right for? Patrick oh, Swayze, no, I mean, no, Wesley Snipes, like or John Leguizamo? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'd be right <laughs> for any of them, but um, this is happening. So it's happening at the school November 1st through the 4th, and it is open to the public. So if you're interested in seeing this developmental workshop, you should go. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, it's about drag queens whose car break down on a cross-country trip, leaving them abandoned in a small town. And it's incredible. You know, and at the time it was right. like the American Priscilla because Priscilla came out, right? And the, it was all it was all the road, yeah, all it totally the, the, is. You yeah. know, three drag queen road trip, that genre, right? That genre. But good for the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. It's a great place. Yeah, very excited for cool. those guys. 
Uh, first of all, hi, Uncle John. Thank you for watching. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, so the Gypsy of the Year is happening. They announced the dates. It's yes. happening December 4th at 4.30 p.m. and December 5th at 2 p.m., which is why it's always hard for us to go because it it's is. during it's work. It is. It's always during our work and We're day. busy. But it's at the New Amsterdam Theater. It's a really fun event every year for Broadway, Broadway Cares, Equity Fights, AIDS, all the shows put on these skits and it's 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 like the Easter bonnet but without the hats. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, and then they have a lot of stars judging and they and it's and it's sort of the end of the fundraising that everyone does, all the shows do in the fall. Uh, so yeah, starting tonight actually theater lobbies in New York City will be filled with the cast of shows asking for donations and then they all sort of compete and we honor the the top it's a super fundraisers fun event. and it's a really yeah. fun event. And there are lots of things on the site that are very interesting right now. We just put up a feature with the Wicked Girls. Oh, you yeah, yeah. I them, interviewed right? Jackie Burns and Amanda Jane. Yep. And, yep. Jane and Cooper, some yep. gorgeous photos of them in a video. Also, Torch Song opened last night at the Tony, Tony Kaiser Theater. There's a photo gallery of all the stars and creatives. Check that out. A new character study went up very late yesterday, so I don't think we talked about it on here, with Anastasia herself, Christy Altamar. It's amazing. Speaking of Anastasia, John Bolton and Carolyn O'Connor just did Never Have I Ever with our Mr. It's Matt Rodin. And it's back. Season premiere. Season premiere back. of Never Season Have premiere. I Ever. Yeah. yeah, and they're hysterical. Uh, a new culturalist challenge. Rank the top 10 best Broadway Halloween costumes. Willy Wonka. Dahlia Levi, you get it. Um, Escape to Margaritaville, congrats on your very first performance, your pre-Broadway engagement. Oh. They're at the New Orleans Sanger Theater starting tonight and all weekend. Um, the one night only broadcast of She Loves Me, if you didn't get a chance to see that at Studio 54, that is on PBS tonight. So it's free now, you can watch it for free. You can watch it on PBS, on PBS. free. You pay for it with your taxes. <laughs> and Hamilton's Mandy Gonzalez put out her debut rec record, Fearless, today. Yeah, so it's really good. I was listening to it on the way Spotify and all that. Yeah, so. it's fantastic. All right. That's, so that's, that's it. All so, I've got. so you have a nice weekend. Thank you very much. I'm going to be We're listening to Taylor Swift's so Gorgeous. And we'll be right. Oh, yeah. Is it? <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and we'll be right back with Charles Bush. On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Because I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass. I'm waving through a window. Throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raised the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Love. Sugar, butter, flour. Broadway's Come From Away is a Best Musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away. The remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. Hey everyone, I am back and live at five. This is Charles Bush. He's here. He's a theater legend, playwright, performer, personality. <laughs> personality. Can we say personality? Yeah, I think yes, yeah, yeah. That, that's you. Uh, so you are back with a new show mm -hmm. at Feinstein's 54 Below, My yes. Kind of 60s. That's right. Yes, My Kind of 60s. Yeah, um, it's a show um, where we take you know that tumultuous decade full of so social change yes it's all about how it affected my life okay because, yeah you know i do find that self-aggrandizement is the the meat and potatoes of cabaret right so it's all about me <laughs> and uh well because you know i grew up in the 60s i went from 6 to 16 in the 60s and it's very much a portrait of um of my growing up in new york city with my aunt lillian who okay. adopted me and was kind of a cross between auntie mame and um Tom Sawyer's Aunt Polly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so and, and all through the crazy background of the '60s, and we sing great songs. I say we because uh, I, I work very closely with my musical director, who sings duets with me, Tom Judson. Tom Judson. I, yeah. you know, I know, I know of him under many names. He's a very talented guy in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're alluding to the fact that my <laughs> he's alluding that my very handsome musical director. Uh, about 15 years ago? Gus Max. Uh, yes, was a, a, the, the last of the great legendary uh, gay porn stars. He's kind of, he thinks, he's sort of the Debbie Reynolds of, of porn, <laughs> the last of the studio <laughs> stars. Yeah. 
with him, that was the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> but always a talented uh, performer and a musical brilliant, director, brilliant too. Musician, yeah. brilliant musician, So how do arranger. you uh, put together, have you done shows with Tom before? You mean has, Gus Maddox? Had, had Not that no, kind of show. No, Tom. No, no. <laughs> he's so tough on me. You know, he's a very, very, very tough um, uh, musical director. He is always, you know, after me with those pesky things like tempo and pitch. <laughs> You know, I feel like, sometimes I, say, I feel like I'm in the book scenes of your movies. He was always a tough drill sergeant. Yeah, no, he's very, very tough. He's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, what you were saying. I was saying, how dear. do you uh, pull together a show with him? Did you guys really collaborate and figure this out? Or did you kind of say, this is my show, I wrote it. No. Let's do it together. Well, actually, this is kind of interesting. In a way, we had attempted a while back um, an autobiographical show about my strange childhood yeah. and I uh, I was kind of writing the s stories first then trying to find songs to shoe it horn in right. and, and it didn't really work so this time around uh, Tom just wrote a list of of great songs and we went through them and thought oh that'd be good and then I found I, I got a million stories honey <laughs> and uh, so you know I found a, a, a story that so somehow fit or could lead into these great songs. And there's songs by Burt Bacharach and uh, Bob Dylan and Sondheim and Kander Neb and cool. uh, Henry Mancini because it's Broadway film and pop from Wonderful, the 60s. Wonderful, yeah. 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 I mean, there's so many great songs to choose so from. The songs came first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and what are you wearing in this show? Well. What, what's the getup? Interesting question. Yeah, I'm wondering. Well, I think about Cabaret that I love so much, and I've been doing this for about five years seriously, uh, is that it's, it's a place where, you know, you don't have a role to play that you really, I like it best when, when the performer is 98% who he or she really is. And, and, and I've always been doing it in drag and, and it's really relatively easy after 40 years for me to be Charles Bush, but looking like Greer Garson. But I still <laughs> felt that it was a little bit like Salome's last veil that, you know, why, why am I in drag other than people know me? That way, so I, so f last March we tried for one night uh, doing it without costume, and I was in some dreary, you know, well, basically what I'm wearing, I think. <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, and and I liked it. I felt really uh -huh. good. But then I thought, why am I ha have so little imagination that it has to be this or that? I mean, right. You know, particularly in this rather gender fluid time we live in. Yes. So I had uh, this very talented young costumer named James Johansmeyer, young man, make me a, a male suit on the order of kind of Bruno Mars, but actually looks more like Susan Hayward and Valley of the Dolls. <laughs> so there's a place where they meet. Okay. And I'm it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a green paisley suit. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Right. And then, you know, you, you know how it is when you go out and, okay, I'll just put a little bit of a race on. Okay, a little bit of mascara. Okay, I'll put some lashes on. So what you're doing hell? light drag? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's, it's, I'm, I'm expressing myself. It's a new Paul. thing. I'm expressing myself. I love and, it, and I feel very good. And the audience seems to buy it. Well, you are a legendary. Uh, do you, do you like you? You don't like the term drag queen, or what are you? Drag performer? <laughs> oh, what are know. you? It's very pretentious, I think, to get too uptight. It's just that in my day, uh -huh. in my day, you know, it, it was. Performers like John Epperson, Lip Sync, right. and I, yeah. you know, we, we were trying so hard to be taken seriously, to be reviewed in the New York Times, to, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, uh, yep. to be a writer, yeah. uh, performer, that it seemed to me that when people would refer to me, press would refer to me as a drag queen, it seemed a little patronizing uh -huh. that, that, you know, I'm just sort of this, you know, a character, not a professional right. writer, performer. Right. So I so I did bristle. and But, you know, at the same time, listen, you got to be you know, uh, pragmatic about it. if somebody's going to describe what you're doing right. and you're in, you know, and you're in a dress and yeah. wig and everything. So what are you doing? Right. So I've come to accept, okay. accept the, the phrase drag legend. Drag legend. Yes. Well, it's also interesting because like on Drag Race, of course, is the big show now. Yeah. And there's a wide array in terms of where the different contestants come from. And some of them really are maybe much closer to your kind of background, real theater, like a yeah. Jinx Monsoon, went to theater but they, school. But they all really, um, they kind of celebrate and embrace the phrase And they, and they embrace the word queen. queen a lot, Drag too. queen. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, different, yeah. it's a different world, honey. Different, it's different world. Different generation. And I think they're, I think they're all marvelous. Is I it? Actually, it's funny. I was performing in... 
uh, you know, I tour. I'm sort of turned into late Marlena Dietrich. I just tour. So all, <laughs> all I do now is just tour with four different countries and uh, 30 cities. And when I was playing in Los Angeles last March, uh, just about the whole audience was from RuPaul's Drag Race. And, and I think Jinx Monsoon t told Kelly Mantle or something that uh -huh. when she saw me, she, she saw her future. I wasn't sure if that was a dig or a compliment, but I think it was a compliment. It's a compliment. She wants to be a legend. <laughs> well, I think it's a way that she saw that, that yes, that at a certain, when, when youth is gone, there is a way that you can continue. Well, Jinx Monsoon would love to have Broadway success. Now, let's remind everyone of The Tale of the Allergist's Wife. Your play was a huge Broadway success. Yes, you are you're, an acclaimed playwright. And You've recently, many plays. I tell you, recently, somebody announced it somewhere that it was the longest running comedy uh -huh. Broadway comedy of the past 25 that years. That sounds right. Yeah. Actually, I was sitting with Miss Michelle Lee, who was yes, in the production, fantastic. when that was announced. So I, and I, of course, I whispered to her, it's because it's one of the only comedies on Broadway <laughs> the past 25 years. And she said, own it. Own so, it, yes. So I, I'm own owning, it. I'm owning it. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about, is it interesting to see, like, Torch Song? trilogy come back and to see I know boys in the band is coming back again yeah. and I know that you know all these there's all and falsettos came back and it, and it's making it makes me wonder I love these plays and I love to see them brought back and have new life but it's also interesting because I want new plays also about you know the gay experience and well, what, there what are, you, are there yeah 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 I mean, yeah, we had a significant other this yeah, past year yeah. so is you is it exciting for you to what's it like for you to revisit these shows I tend not to. I'm so what about your plays? I'm sort of terrified, actually, that the Alger's wife might ever come back. <laughs> well, you know, certain things, I don't know, maybe were of their moment, and I, I would just be so afraid that, that a, something of mine that was a great success might be reevaluated. and well, people I guess, think, yeah, that's, I guess that's, people think, that's kind of hey, always... So, we thought this was funny. Eh, you know, no, that's I, kind I of always know. the fear. Because, yeah, somebody actually wanted to... Recently, this was going to be our... Was this the 30th year? 30th anniversary of Vampire Lesbians of Sodom, which huge was a play. Huge off-Broadway success. Yeah, yeah I, for a long time, I don't know, I guess I, it's not any, it was the longest running <laughs> play in bro off-Broadway history or something, ran right. five years. But uh, anyway, a young man wanted to do a revival of right. that with me recreating uh -huh. my part. And I said, no, 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 no. I, I think it was just a fluke that, that somehow at that moment and who I was and oh. what was going on in New York at that moment that we somehow got past them. You know? right. And uh, I'd be terrified that people reevaluate and think, oh, what were they thinking? Are you writing any plays now? Are you always writing something? or I th About a year or two ago, I was being very to melodramatic to myself and, and think, no, oh, I don't think I'll write any more plays. I, there are a lot of other things you can do to have a creative life than write yeah. a play. You know? yeah, yeah. I do a lot of things. You know? yeah. um, and actually, this whole cabaret career is one of them. Right. But now I, I, don't, I can't keep away. I've written one play that's out and about, and, and then we're going to do another. Making the rounds. Then I'm going to do a little play that for, for myself. Uh, uh, there's a place called Theater for the New City. Yes. Uh, you know, which is kind of the. It's a um, kind of the miniplex of the avant-garde on right. the Lower East Side. It's a wonderful theater, and, and it's been really, in a way, my artistic home for the past 40 years. So uh, every, about every year or so, I, I do. I call it a little play, and we don't invite any critics. We just uh -huh. have a lot of fun and sell it out on Facebook and take the pictures, have fun, and that's the end of it. Not a workshop. That's just it. So we're going to do another one in April. Right. Uh, yeah. But r right now, I'm just really enjoying uh, touring. You know, I, I, I'd always had this fantasy for years of touring in one of my plays, mm. but it just never seemed financially suitable because they really should be in smaller theaters and tours are expensive. So this way, with my my act, it's been a way of me for me to go. Just I mean, really, I mean, I, you name it, we've kind of played it at this point, right. and meeting people who and performing for people who who've never seen me in person, just know my plays from their local productions mm -hmm. and, right. you know, or a couple little movies I made. So it's, it's been lovely. I'm, I'm just having a marvelous time and learning so much about singing and uh, telling a story just through, through song and right. telling my anecdotes, because I'm, I'm a big anecdotist. 
I got, <laughs> as I said, I got a million stories. And yeah. I've been working on a memoir so long. It's 400 pages now, and I'm still only 13 years old. You know, <laughs> but it allows me to have a lot of stories to tell in my act, which is what this current show is at Find Sense 54 Below, which is actually I'm on stage in about an hour and a half. Yeah, so it's, t- it's tonight and tomorrow night tomorrow at night, 7 p.m. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, do, you, do you recommend anything on the menu at Fine Sense 54 Below you choose, that you like to nosh on? How do you feel about people eating while you're performing? Do you yeah, want I them to? I don't mind it. I don't okay. mind it. They're very good. I tell you, 54 Below is a wonderful place. And um, but they have a marvelous uh, chef there, Lynn Bound, who's just marvelous. And I've been teaching myself how to cook oh. over the past uh, year or so. And so I, I go into the kitchen before the show, and she gives me tips. And, oh, okay. And I'm trying to work on the perfect omelet, Paul. Because <laughs> I say if you can get, cook a perfect omelet, then you're a cook. Yeah. Perfect omelet? Yeah, okay. I've got a long way to go. Not there yet? No, no. But well, it's good to be working towards things, right? You have to have a goal, don't you? <laughs> What's the uh, opening number in the show? Can you tell me? Oh, it's a, we do a little medley. Yeah, I used to always make fun of performers who do medleys, and now there hasn't been a medley that I don't like. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I love, them. I love a good medley, Paul. Uh, oh, we do a medley of this very swing and jazz waltz called Your Zowie Face, which was the theme from Our Man Flint. Oh, For uh-huh. you obscure you movie fanatics Yeah, out look there. it up on YouTube, and kids. It, we've, and we've paired it as part of a medley with Look at that face. Oh, Just look at it. Great song. Yeah. yeah. That fabulous face mm-hmm. of yours. Yeah. yeah. I love that song. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I love your career because I love how you always keep it interesting. And you've done so much and you're always, you always have something new and you're always sort of like reinventing yourself. And I think it's amazing. Yeah, I really am. Yeah. I, really, I, get a lot of, I get a lot of ideas. Yeah. And I'm, you know what's really been great and lucky for me? And, and I, uh, it's a little bit in my show just... I've somehow, I, I've always hooked up from the very beginning with, with my aunt, who was my first great collaborator at the age of eight. Uh, I've managed to hook up with a series of, of people who have great focus and energy, and they kind of hook onto my imagination, and we do things together. Because mm-hmm. I'm not really a detail kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in this case, you know, I've, I've had wonderful... I've worked with very few directors, really, because you know I stay with them for so many years. Right. And, uh, Ken Elliott, who directed all of my early shows, yeah. and, which my career is really my reputation is kind of based on, right. yeah. and Carl Andrus, yeah. who I still work with, yep. uh, and now Tom Judson as as musical director. Yeah, and and they're all they all have something in common with my aunt, and that this they have great concentration, and just won't give up because often I just get very frustrated and mm. just or I, I fall asleep. You know, <laughs> I just fall asleep, <laughs> and when I wake up, they've kind of figured it out the problem. And right. Then, you know, yeah. Right. So I'm I'm very lucky that way. Your Tom, your musical director also makes T-shirts. Tom Tom makes T-shirts. Yeah. I bought some T-shirts for right. you. Oh, you're one of his, oh, his customers. Oh yeah, absolutely. I Tom's the name. trendy tees. There you go on Etsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out on Etsy because he has a lot of um, cool, rare, a lot of musical theater things, and yeah. it's fu- it's a lot of fun. So check that out too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at that promoting a side business. Well, I'm a customer, you know. Um, <laughs> So thank you. You said the Audrey Hepburn to Givenchy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the celebrity model. No. No. <laughs> okay. Not me. Trying. Uh, Trying. Okay. Well, everyone, if you don't have anything to do in like an hour and a half, <laughs> you can get go your s- clothes on. Yeah. You, yeah. You can go see Charles. Uh, and tomorrow night also at seven o'clock. And then you, how do you people keep track of where you are on the road and stuff like that? Well, uh, first of all, I have a website. Yep. CharlesBush.com. Yep. And I have a Facebook fan site, which I... I cool. I'm the Toscanini of Facebook, I have to tell you. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so just um, sign on for that, and you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm up to all the time. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, everyone, go check him out at Fine Science 54 Below and follow him and go see him wherever he's coming to you. And I can't wait to see your next play and all that. Well, thank you so much, Paul. Good to see you. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing weekend. And we'll see you Monday for another great cast on Live at Five. Bye. Bye.